Hi, my name is Sarah Nesbitt, and I'm part of the committee who has aided in the development of the Human-Centered Engineering Design Program. And in this video, we'll take you through the development of this new and exciting program and go over what students will gain from their experience while working on their degree with us. In order to develop a program that was robust, one that would meet the needs of industry, and one that would actually meet the needs and desires of students choosing this degree program, we, in addition to engaging in an engineering design process to develop a purpose and plan, we also met with University of Michigan-Dearborn faculty, administration, and students to gather information about current processes, desires from the students, and availability and skills that our faculty already had that could contribute to such a program. We also did an assessment of what tools and resources and spaces already existed on our campus so that we could either leverage what was already here or establish needs, a list of needs and resources that we would need to acquire to have a successful program. We also engaged in campus visits and information gathering from universities all over the nation and including an institution in another country. We also use this information to understand some of the successes of these programs, some of the must-haves that a human-centered engineering design program must have to be successful, to understand how we might leverage existing resources, to understand what resources these programs acquired that we would also have to consider in the design of this program. And they welcomed us to their schools. We also met with our Industrial Advisory Board, which is a group of professionals in various sectors of industry at different roles and levels. And they informed us of the fit of this type of degree program, of how a graduate might meet needs in the current industry and in the future and projected needs of, of our society. And with this information, we found and we used this to inform the design of our human-centered engineering design program. So based on what we have learned from our visits, we decided to create a unique program for future human center engineering designers that also fits the needs of industries, not only throughout Michigan at a local level, but also throughout the Midwest and the country at a global level. So this program will be a multidisciplinary program combined in design thinking, art, engineering technologies, marketing, and communication to support students in their creativity and entrepreneurship. There are multiple variations of human-centered design, and our method is based on the Stanford D School with five stages, including empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. And in this program, we will be encouraging students to develop a thinking process that will provide them with the technical background to research, identify, translate, and document users' needs, and in the end, generate creative product slash process design ideas that address user requirements and implement and evaluate the usability of products or services in a scientific way. So here's a sneak peek into what students will be learning while working on their degree. Keeping in mind uh, the engineering design steps or stairs presented by my colleagues just in the previous slide, uh, we decided to build a curriculum that reflects a clear vision and mission for the human-centered engineering design, which is address the growing need for engineering designers that serve human needs by applying design thinking processes to the whole product life cycle while considering users' need, technologies, and business factors. So the program uh, uh, will be hosted by the Department of Industrial and Manufacturing Engineering, uh, and the curriculum is designed to meet ABET accreditation requirements in mathematics, sciences, engineering, and design. 